What if entrepreneurship was a career? What would the potential impact of that be? So the first time I thought about entrepreneurship, I think it was in high school, around senior five. I didn't know what entrepreneurship was all about. I just wanted to survive, you know. I was thinking about entrepreneurship as making money. You know, making money, making money. Yeah, you get two, three dollars, five dollars out of the day. Like, yeah, you know what, you got lunch, you got something out of it. Being an entrepreneur, it's not just about yourself. It's about the people around you, how you impact the others. When you're actually a young person and you're actually like having a figure you're representing, there's this curse that comes along with it. Curse of being number one. You're always like regarded as someone who is perfect. We read exciting things, stuff about entrepreneurs, but it's not really exciting. It's not exciting to know that you don't have salary to give your teammates at the end of the month. Uh, that didn't go well. They would order, but they would never like purchase. So I think I had like one successful order, like much money. <laughs> So the business had to close. The first challenge that I think we faced was the fact that we're very young. But we were some young guys from the university who started this and everybody was like, why are we the ones to do this? I remembered when I, I wanted to, to create the bank account of the company, you know, the, the, the bank, uh, bank officer like look at, looked at me like, oh, who is this? <laughs> we wanted to see the person in charge, but they can see you and they're like, oh, we're the people in charge. What, what did you want to talk about? Being a young person, our uh, actions and our uh, skills are actually second guest. It's very caring experience. There is so many negative assumptions around it. Like, I show your products are genuine. Entrepreneurship is tough. Entrepreneurship is very hard. And you need to be extremely bold to do those things. So my guardians, they think that I sell vegetables on the streets. <laughs> they don't really understand like what I really do. What will you do when everything is at stake? I love to, to take the risk to live this challenge every day. I'll be honest, I don't see this competition. I refuse to accept that someone else is more intelligent than I am. Great African entrepreneurs are existing. Why would I stop at this point? I always keep going. Welcome to the journey. I'm Didi Onru, your host for the next few weeks as we follow these change makers. Every episode will follow the entrepreneurs as they navigate how to refine their business models, secure their customers, and scale their businesses. Each entrepreneur will set their own targets and try and reach them. Through their ups and downs, we'll explore topics such as job creation, revenue growth, storytelling, and the art of balancing being young and running their businesses. For the past 12 years, the Nzisha Prize has championed very young African entrepreneurs. Each year, we go on a mission to find Africa's brightest and youngest entrepreneurs between the ages of 15 and 22 who are running job generative businesses that are transforming their communities. For the very first time in 2021, we took you along the ride to find these young people and find out more about what they do and how they do it. They're innovative risk takers who are showcasing that entrepreneurial skills are a necessity. Now they're on their own journeys to scale their businesses and a chance to win one of four grand prizes worth $10,000 each. Revenue growth, job creation, storytelling, and implementation of tools. Who will stumble? Who will be victorious? You'll have to wait and see. In the last episode, we met Jovia, Munyaradzi, and Tepadzwa, and they shared what it took to start the business, what obstacles they faced, and how they triumphed. Jovia has her eyes set on the storytelling prize. Munya thinks he can win all four. Tepadzwa is basking in the support of his team. This week, we'll meet new entrepreneurs whose stories and journeys are just as inspiring. So stay tuned as we delve deeper into the entrepreneurial landscape of the continent as told by young people. As you know, each entrepreneur is assigned a business coach for the duration of the three-year fellowship. We found that this is integral in ensuring young entrepreneurs are set up for success. The best thing about being a venture partner is working with the fellows throughout their entrepreneurial journey. I really love engaging with them, having conversations with them, not just about their business, but them as an individuals as well. I do realize that um, even though you're an Anzisha fellow and we've chosen you because of your business, we've also chosen you because you're an individual and you're a leader in your own right. So my favorite part is engaging with the young entrepreneurs and the coaching sessions and when we get to meet face to face as well.
Nei Oshi is willing to get her hands dirty as a farmer and is showing us that we should all get our hands dirty sometimes, especially when it's for the greater good. I've always liked to nurse things and you know watch them grow, watch them increase, watch them multiply and that was how I knew that this was something I was really passionate about. My name is Enei Ashi and I'm from Koshima State, Nigeria. I teach people how to farm and I build school farms. I started Rathalos NASA during my third year in the university and this was because I wanted to solve real-time problems from what I was learning in school and I was studying agriculture, economics and extension at that time and we were um, learning a lot about fisheries, um, plant production and livestock and also poultry management and that motivated me to you know, start as a farm hub. For young women in our time, I think the paradigm is shifting. The young folks in general we tend to see Greek as a kind of toil. We are trying to enlighten the youth that agriculture has moved from that archaic method. We have smart farming now, we have new concept of agricultural 5.0, so we have new technologies. Being a woman in agriculture has been really cool. Why? Because there are lots of organizations, agencies willing to support you. A lot of people, when they meet my co-founder and find out that he has a female founder who is in agriculture, it's like, wow. The hardest thing about starting the business was raising funds. So we did a lot of bootstrapping within the first few months, but we needed um, we needed more funds. It was simply writing out, you know, the list of items we needed, what it would cost, and how we'd share the cost among us equally. I think the biggest misconception people have about entrepreneurship and money is that you get to make a lot of money when you run your own business. But the truth is really tough because uh, in a paid employment, you are sure of XYZ figure every month. I started dealing with failure and rejection really bad. Um, and over time, I got to learn that um, you'd receive so many no's, um, but it doesn't mean that's the end. As young minds, we have that opportunity and the platform, most especially, to innovate and do something unusual. I wasn't really aware of all the challenges that I was signing up for and going through all of the issues um, and all of the hurdles that I have faced as an entrepreneur, I got to realize that it's actually part of the process and I cannot skip the process. We are headed to Liga City College, Sabo. Um, we have a school farm facility. And how many schools have you guys done this project in? Um, so in about five schools and a correctional facility. So making it a total of six school farms. What's your criteria? Do you guys have a criteria of choosing the schools or how does that work? So we are not responsible for choosing the schools. The Ministry of Agriculture works hand in hand with the Ministry of Education here in Lagos State to select the schools that we would be implementing the program in. What's a challenge when it comes to like implementing these um, farms and these schools? The challenge is largely um, getting um, a strong workforce in the sense that a lot of um, people working under us are contractors and 
they can disappoint. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes the project tarry longer than it should when we have um, maybe painters or welders or you know, workmen disappointed. So that's just a major challenge, getting people of integrity, getting people who would keep to their words if mm -hmm. they would finish this work in 10 days. They're sure that they will finish it in 10 days. We have three categories. We have the first course, which is Smart Farming 101. We also have City Farming 101, and last course, Agribusiness 101. So we are actually taking them on a learning curve to um, know what it feels like to practice agriculture at homes, agriculture in their cities. We also want them to um, be able to think about ways to innovatively solve different issues in the agricultural sector. And we want to also get more of these young people involved in agribusiness. So this is actually what the course curriculum is about. In the process of hiring our first employee, wasn't so cool in that we did not have um, a hiring manager. It was just me knowing that I needed someone to get this job done. Um, and I tried to read up how to go about finding the best person for the job. But then unfortunately, the hire wasn't so great. We all eat, so imagine if there's nobody that was farming, where would we be? So we need farmers, we need everyone that we can get into the agriculture sector and everything. So it's very, agric is very, very important. My main aim is to ensure that all site operations are successful on a day-to-day -day basis. We have to juggle six sites simultaneously. So mm. um, the fact that you may need something at the other sites at a particular time, so all of that, you really need to think ahead and really plan the day to have a good run. It's been fun. She's one person. You know, as a project manager, one of the things, or one of my fears is having to delegate responsibilities mm -hmm. to someone and be confident that the person is able to deliver. So she has been that person that I can say, whatever she's handling, I just zero my mind off it and you know, focus on other things here. So she's that, she's reliable. One of the challenges doing business in Nigeria are policies. I mean, you can wake up one morning and there is a new policy that might you know, frustrate you out of business. For an opportunity, I would say you can sell anything in Nigeria. You just know, you just need to know how to market. So there's a huge opportunity in every sector. You can basically sell anything. What like tips would you give a young person who is starting a business like this or a project like this and has to deal with maybe the bureaucracy of all the, you know, of all the people or the politics around such a sector? You need to understand the culture and you need to also respect the processes because um, as young people, we could be filled, filled with so much, you know, zest and just want to get things done. But some people can just like sit down there and just like block it off. Do you understand? So um, by being diplomatic, I don't mean bending standards or like compromising quality, but I mean understanding the culture, the people involved, and recognizing them. You may have a better way, but you need to show them that okay, your advice is really precious. Some of the goals I would love to achieve at Agricity would be to increase the number of school farms um, with the focus on um, schools in rural areas and this is because the core vision of um, this arm of the program is to ensure that young people, more young people embrace agriculture and so it's really important for us to grow um, especially across various schools here in Lagos State, Nigeria. If you keep pushing, if you keep doing what you're doing, there's a yes at the end of the tunnel. So um, I've received so many no's and I've received so many yes. Most of the times, 
getting a yes doesn't mean that is what is right for your business so we've seen over time um, many cases where we received a yes and going down the line it wasn't worth it at all which of the four grand prizes are you most interested in and why i think from the beginning of everything um, I had talked about storytelling because I feel like that is very, very unique and um, it was a great attempt to grow my video shooting and video editing skills and business storytelling in general so I was really interested in that because I felt like it was really unique. Marketing is really important in a business. I feel like it's the core of every business. Without marketing, you can't sell without sales. You can't generate revenue and money is actually what fuels a business. So it's at the core of every business. Where do you see this growing? Is it more schools? Is it past state lines? Like, are we moving beyond Lagos? What's the big dream? Yeah, so um, we are going national by God's grace. Yeah, so I hope to see this replicated in all schools because, you know, one of the goals we have, I think the major goals we have at AgriCity is to enliven the practice of agriculture. Like Shalom said, make people see that farming can be fun and easy. So we would like to see students, you know, jump on this and also think beyond their certificates. So coming to school, you are not just waiting till you graduate to get your paper, as it were, before you can start making progress in life. So you could really diversify your effort. I think it's, it has been a thing of joy to be able to inspire people around you, especially um, to keen to a vision or a personal goal that you have. And so um, I was really excited to see my younger brother um, dress up. He had his career day. So career day is a thing in schools where um, young kids get to dress up the way they want to be. So if you want to be a lawyer, you dress up like a lawyer. If you want to be a doctor, you dress up like a doctor. And so my younger brother says he wants to be a farmer and he got his farmer's hat and he dressed up as a farmer and this was largely inspired by his big sister me yes so it was really really exciting and i'm glad that i was able to inspire him and i look forward to inspiring more children to embrace agriculture Inegi has never been shy of the camera and it's clear she's coming for the storytelling prize now let's head to cameroon to meet tabe sergio who is showing us why hiring young people might be the secret to running a business Call you Sergio, I call you Tabe. Which one's which? Who's you? Oh, Tabe is the boy in school, and Sergio is a guy on the entrepreneurial background. I am Tabe Ashu Sergio, a 22 year old Cameroonian entrepreneur and a 2021 Azisha Prize Fellow. I am the CEO and co founder at Excel Academy, a business that operates in the educational space and provides home tutoring services to K 12 students and web classes services to high school students. So I know you started your first business at 14, which is really, really young. Um, tell me how that experience was. I didn't know what entrepreneurship was all about. I just wanted to survive, you know. Like growing up as a boy, I just like thought it wise to teach and I could generate some little money from there. I kept on thinking and asking myself while I grew up, that how can I actually contribute towards uh, making other children who had gone through my situation having uh, difficult moments to benefit from the positive feedback of doing things. That's how I actually like came up with Excel Academy to provide the assistance towards those those people who are undergraduates and undergraduates. So I uh, started entrepreneurship a little bit before uh, Sergio and. Uh, one day in school, in a second year in university, I came, I heard, I heard someone speaking English. And I'm like, I mean, this is a French school, and who is that speaking English? So I came towards him and 
we started having a conversation, we started sharing ideas. And one day he calls me to his uh, student room and he's like, he has an idea, he wants to do this. And, you know, because I have that background in entrepreneurship, I quickly developed on the idea and I was like, guy, yeah, we can make this big. Starting early as a young entrepreneur is like a blessing. We have multiple chances of trials. We just find ourselves doing stuff at all points. I've had myself like being uh, a positive influence towards the youthful community in my country. What keeps us going is we believe that everything is possible. I, I refuse to accept that someone else is more intelligent than I am. Someone who started a business and raised X amount of capital and exit from the business, then I think I can do something similar. So I know you started the business with your co-founder. So tell me a little bit about your relationship. How did you decide on him helping you build this business? Eugene, we, he's a great guy. Yeah, we actually met on campus. Uh, he has been my friend since uh, my second year of university. So I can say we've been collaborating and he has been of great help to me, both in and out of business. The easiest thing about working with a friend is that Friends are very understanding, you know, you guys, we, we're not just friends on the business level, we, we were friends like from class, as mates, we share other stuff apart from business. He didn't have really changed, vu saw that we were young people who were in the group, but now we are in a professional cadre, it's true that there are moments where we can laugh, but we are trying to be the most serious possible to make our project. So, I can't really say that he has changed on himself. But when it concerns the work, you have to really work. Sergio used to bring in more money than I did, right? But because he brought in more money and he was also putting in work and I was putting in work, there was some kind of like imbalance because, you know, he was putting in work, I was putting in work, but the money coming in was different. So we decided to have an arrangement whereby the percentage be reviewed, right? And at the time, it was quite uncomfortable for Sergio because he was like, you know, it's his idea. And I could see in his eyes, you know. But we needed to have the conviction to move forward. It's very important. People are actually blessed by my implications in their lives in a positive way. So that's what's keeping me going. Do you ever feel pressure, too much pressure? Like, you know, people are looking up to you and, you know, it's a lot for the young and the other people who want to be like you. Do you ever feel the pressure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The curse of being number one. But we are just human beings. So being a young person, I have a lot of pressure on me to always do things right, to always like be at the forefront of being successful. And let's say being a super being whereas I'm human. We read exciting stuff about entrepreneurs, but it is not really exciting. It's not exciting to know that you don't have salary to give your teammates at the end of the month. You know, in any business, you meet people and you must understand how to work with them, right? And you must understand how to bring value to their own lives so that they stay with you. The leaders we have, both Jimmy Lonko and Sabi Sejo, are people that don't only bother about the money they work, but they most especially bother about the value they bring. What do you enjoy most about doing business in Cameroon? Oh, uh, I can say the atmosphere. Mm. It's kind of convenient because uh, people we have around are actually encouraging in a way. Just the government that really influences us in a very difficult way. Right. Yeah. The taxes, the taxes are so much, yes, especially for young businesses. Okay. I believe if they could really like reduce the taxes, people could survive and many businesses could be prosperous. You know, people create businesses, but at some point they shut down because of fiscality and yeah, yeah. the government is not very, very friendly at that point. So, yeah, I can say that it's great towards people accepting our services, you see, as young people. They believe in young people at this point compared to any other time. That's really you. Evolved. How, how easy or how difficult was it for you to like, because I always think about young entrepreneurs when it comes to starting a business in, in some countries on the continent. Like, you know, registering a business is really difficult. Yeah. Getting some sort of certification is really difficult because of the barriers and things like that. What was, how easy or how difficult was, was it for you when you registered Excel and all of that stuff? Oh, uh, I can say we got it easier at the level of uh, the people we had around us. Yes, my co-founder introduced to us his uncle, who actually mm. saw us through the initiation of our business, you know. 
that's why it's very important to build some sort of network around oneself it's always important because such network permits one to easily go through stuff easily mm. and to like have things going along without any challenge so you would say like would you say an important skill for a young entrepreneur to have is the ability to network and create a yeah. community around them of support for sure for sure because net- networking has really like enabled us to have things going see when you actually have people around you kind of like uh are found in some places they could provide a sort of sort of assistance without you streaming mm. you get it yeah and someone you know in your network might know someone who could be a really good influence towards your career the best advice i heard about networking was like um i think it was from an american actress called Issa Rae, okay and she said it's always good to network across like with your friends versus networking upwards the people you think are in a better position because your friends have more of an understanding of what you need and who you are and they too have skills and i thought that was really a really cool way to think about networking especially for young people when your age sometimes is a barrier you know um i think i've asked you this earlier but like when do you think your age is an advantage and when do you think it's a disadvantage okay my age is actually an advantage especially um when i am actually given an opportunity to 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 discover and actually present stuff to people Mm -hmm. yeah people especially those who are really in love with young people striving they're always welcoming yeah i can say so you know you can have a junior one doing what you actually did in your 40s it's worth uh, celebrating at some point so there are people find our services really amazing especially as we are young yeah, that's well, that's especially for those who are in the world of entrepreneurship but now uh, it's really challenging uh, especially for the other people who believe in the fact that what we are doing is mainly supposed to be done by older people mm-hmm. older teachers who are more experienced according to them okay i discovered them let's say three years ago now and um, i think my children came back home and telling me they want to work with them so I talked with Sergio and uh, we discussed about the prices because for the parents, that's the cue. I didn't know anything about them. So the first year, um, I had some results, but uh, there, there was thing to improve, like uh, my boy was not working as well in physics and so So I discussed with them, they changed the teachers and even uh, had the, the approaching way of teaching. And then in the year, and then I mean the next year, the boy improved. Uh, he was around 12 or 10, but he got up to 15, 16. Then finally he got the A level with uh, the A grades in physics, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I know the surgeon and their partners, what's so good about Excel that you think people should know about? The result talk itself about their work. Uh, my boy have, uh, let's say, 17 over 20 GCE A-level. Mm-hmm. He's now in abroad to continue his uh, studies there. So if you think about those four grand prizes, which ones or which one are you thinking about going for and why? The revenue good uh, prize and also the employee good price. Yeah, those two are actually at my reach. Yeah, because we are rapidly growing as time goes and the number of people we employ are growing at the fast rate. Start small and remain focused. It's very important. You know, many young entrepreneurs going for uh, nominations and awards and get carried away at some point. The business matters most. The impact matters most. Leaving a reputation and you running a business is all what it takes. You need to start small, remain focused, and keep driving. The biggest misconception is that a young person can't follow through. What I've found that with our young entrepreneurs is that they've got grit. They're able to be innovative in their businesses. They're able to, uh, actually they're quite mature in the sense of getting a product to market is very difficult. We have seen time and time again that our young entrepreneurs are following through. 
Starting a business with friends seems to be the best route to go. For Santa, it took a little more convincing, but he finally got there. When I was still in college, I was already thinking about starting a business. You know, it's like a normal thing for me because I I was I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. My full name is Santa Hakuto Warimanga and I'm from Madagascar and I'm the CEO and founder of MapOS, uh, an online platform connecting students and universities uh, on a platform. We have uh, six uh, team members right now. So we have there is me and uh, my sister who is uh, in charge of the operation uh, of the, the business. We also have a student support officer who is uh, talking with customers and parents. And uh, there is, uh, we have two developers who are developing the, the online platform. And we have uh, a product designer who is doing our, our design. When I was a kid, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, I was thinking about entrepreneurship as uh, making money, no, making money, making money, and no, it's more to, to, to create values to people more than making money. We didn't have uh, so much entrepreneurs in our family because uh, my parents are all, they were employees. You know, it's like, uh, I was in me, I was a, that I had that uh, pro so problem solver trait and I wanted to make money and I saw that, oh, uh, there are the entrepreneurs who are making big money, <laughs> why not to try? I remembered when I first, uh, I wanted to, to create the bank account of the company, you know, the, the, the bank, uh, bank, bank officer like look at, looked at me like, oh, who is this? <laughs> when I decided to uh, pursue my higher education in Mauritius in 2016, and I know that there is a lot of students who need uh, guidance when they go through the process, the study abroad process, and I decided to 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 start my quest to help them. What would you say to um, people who who basically say why are you sending kids abroad instead of studying at home? Yeah, great question because <laughs> we we get this question a lot of times when we are uh, talking with someone, and uh, what I answer is uh, because it's it's. Um, my personal case, you know, uh, when uh, students are studying abroad, they can go back to the, their, their, home, their own country to, to give back to the country, to bring more innovation, to create startups, to create jobs for, for, for other people. And I think the, the internal experience is, uh, is an advantage for them to give back to their, their country, their own country. I was uh, working while I, I studied in Mauritius. I worked as a gas station. I carried uh, bags of rice <laughs> at supermarket. I, I promoted food at supermarket. All of this, all of these things. I so uh, I have done all of these things to to finance my studies abroad. Uh, I had the chance to, uh, for example, at my, at the job at these jobs, I had the chance to work with an entrepreneur with a small businesses, and I saw uh, how he managed the business. So I, I've take uh, I've taken. Uh, lessons and uh, for example for for my jobs at uh, to promote foods uh, it uh, teached it taught me uh, the the basics of sales and that i, I actually uh, currently implement in the business carrément oui je suis très très fière de lui bah, parce que euh, j'ai vu par où il a commencé j'ai été là lorsqu'il a député j'ai vu par quoi euh, on est passé euh, nous en tant que famille et lui aussi en tant que chef d'entreprise, parce que euh, on n'est plus seulement euh, proche du côté euh, personnel, euh, familial, donc on est aussi proche du côté professionnel et ça nous aide à grandir mutuellement, euh, d'être de côté professionnel et personnellement. In your opinion, why do you think your business is needed for the people in your community? So why do you think MapWest is a is a great platform for young people to have? 50% of African people, including Malagasy people, Malagasy students, want to study abroad, but two, only 2% two manage to go. And uh, that's a big problem in the community because uh, there is a lack of uh, support in this, uh, uh, in this, there is a gap between this, uh, this, uh, this number. And I think it's a, it's a, 
that our business are solving this problem, that uh, there is a need that we are solving. Entrepreneurship about uh, taking risks. You know, all of the things that you are going to do are involves some risks. So you, you should be a risk taker to be an entrepreneur, I think. The hardest moment of the business, it's like uh, three months after, three or two months after I, I started the business. You know, I started the business in December 20th, 2019. And in this, at the start of 2020, uh, there was a COVID-19 were coming and there were the the, restri the travel restriction or uh, there were some some schools who cancelled their intakes and uh, parents and students were panicking there were some students who were already getting the, the admission letter they are in the process to 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 fly to the to the other country and uh, I think that was the the hardest moment and uh, uh, we had the chance to, to have the, some uh, uh, the schools m uh, move to, to online classes and uh, uh, there was some uh, special flight and uh, I think it was the, the hardest moment of, this, uh, of the business. I think uh, I fail every day, <laughs> you know. I, 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 don't, I don't remember. Uh, I think it's like uh, every day I, I do some mistakes and I learn from them every day. I, I, don't, think, uh, I don't think of it like a uh, barrier. I think it's, uh, it's something that I live in, in my everyday life. I remember the day that uh, I decided to start the business. I only had uh, my savings because I just, uh, I created the business one month after I came back in Madagascar and I, I only had a saving of like uh, uh, 18 dollars. We struggled to find first a physical office because we 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 were, we were not able to to rent an offices at that time, and uh, we we tried to convince uh, a lot of people to 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 borrow us a, a room to to <laughs> to start our business. Tena savatra ita kwe masatra le sa le mano startup eto mtsika eto madagaskara le iza lu volu ni ati te misi masama no misi anko ni peta pesa le iza ni ara miasa mtsanta mafuna tra pesa chi iza iza mi I know that uh, entrepreneurship is uh, pretty difficult, but I love the, to take the risk. I think it's the, the best job uh, ever because I help students to realize their dream to study abroad and I think it's uh, priceless. Déjà qui a tente que je peux je peux m'apprendre beaucoup de lui. Et voilà, mais ce serait bien si j'aurais bien mon propre entreprise un de ces jours. I think it uh, it will be helpful if you have more initiatives uh, to to help to support uh, young uh, entrepreneurs, like uh, not only about the business support, how to do all of these things and all of these administrative things. It will be helpful, I think. Money is not the first problem. I don't say that money is not a problem, but money is not the biggest problem to not start a business. I think it's uh, support. I is the What is your target? Is it revenue growth? Is it job creation? Is it storytelling prize or systems and and tell us why you're choosing that? I was hesitating between two, but it's a uh, revenue growth and storytelling, but I think it's more revenue growth. And uh, I think it's like uh, a challenge for me as well to, to grow our revenue and uh, we have that, uh, that potential being a, a digital platform, we can, uh, we can achieve this. It's such a great thing, you know, to, to tell your story, to inspire other young people. What are you thinking about? to implement in business for you to reach your, your target? Uh, we have our online platform, that's to our biggest asset. You know, it's like uh, we have to, we can scale fast with our online platform and we are intending to onboard uh, some investors to, to, to help us achieve, achieve this. That brings us to the end of the episode. The entrepreneurial journey should never be done alone. That's why at NZ Show, we believe for young people to be successful entrepreneurs, they need to be supported by their parents, educators, and their government. And we heard firsthand from Tabe, Enei, and Santa, 
what they need to be successful. Despite their challenges, they're still forging ahead. Before we go, let's see what the leaderboard has to say. For revenue growth, Santa is coming in strong, but Munya is still leading, followed by Tafadzwa and Tabe. For storytelling prize, Ene is slightly in the lead, followed by Jovia, Grace, and Tabe. For job creation, Tabe is making a dent and has overtaken Enei, Isa, and Rebecca. Next week, we'll meet new entrepreneurs who are also vying for the cash prizes. Until then, don't forget to follow us on social media and see you next time.